Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys the biggest value picks in the first five rounds of your 2020 fantasy football draft. Now, before I get into these picks, I'd like to ask you guys to please go down below and click that subscribe button. It's free, and I produce content every single day to help you guys win your 2020 fantasy football championship. So without further ado, let's get into biggest value picks per round for the first five rounds of your 2020 NFL Draft. Now, with some of these, there actually might be more than one pick for each round that I think is great value, some that I have stats based on, and some that I just want to actually just make, give a bit of a quick mention before I get into the real pick. So the first round here, I'm going to read off all of the ADP of the first round based off of Yahoo.com. So the first pick of the draft is Christian McCaffrey. Number two is Saquon Barkley. Three is Ezekiel Elliott. Four, Alvin Kamara. Five, Michael Thomas. Six, Alvin Cook. Seven, Derrick Henry. Eight, Devontae Adams. Nine, Joe Mixon. Tyreek Hill is number 10. And 11 is DeAndre Hopkins. And the final pick of the first round is Nick Chubb. So obviously the best value of the draft to me in the first round is Christian McCaffrey. This guy is a running back and a wide receiver combined, but that is way too easy of a pick. That's a fucking sheep pick, and we know we ain't part of the good sheeps this year. So we are going to be talking about Joseph Mixon, running back of the Cincinnati Bengals right now on FFPC. ADP FFPC is high stakes leagues, not on Yahoo. ADP average draft position 10.71, a Cincinnati Bengals, 6 foot 1 inches, 228 pounds, 24 years young for Mr. Joseph Mixon. He ran a 4.45 or a 4.50 40-yard dash, 77th percentile, 92nd percentile speed score, 48th percentile burst score, 53rd percentile agility score, and a 58th percentile bench press. Right now, Joe Mixon is coming off the board as the seventh running back, and he is the overall pick number nine, obviously, inside of the first uh, first round. So he finished as the 13th best running back in fantasy football in 2020, playing all 16 games. He finished with 14.1 PPR points per game, ranking 19th at running back. He had 278 carries, 17.4 per game, ranking 5th at the running back position, 1,138 rushing yards, 71.1 per game, ranking 8th at running back. Now, where his numbers kind of divvy on down is in the target and reception total number. 45 total re- targets for 2.8 per game, 27th at running back, and 35 receptions, 2.2 per game, 28th at running back. I actually expect that number to rise in 2020 due to the fact that while they obviously have other backs behind Joe Mixon like Giovanni Bernard, I think that we're going to see Joe Mixon getting more dump-offs due to the fact that rookie quarterback Joseph Burrow is going to be the starting quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals and uh, typically rookie quarterbacks kind of look for that dump off they kind of want to get that safety play on their team and the safe play is not to go 90,000 yards down the field to try to throw it to AJ Green before he inevitably breaks his foot it's to dump it off to Mr. Joseph Mixon so he had 287 receiving yards last season 17.9 per game 24th at running back he did though have nice numbers in the rushing or the rushing touchdown total or the total touchdown total and the red zone touches so he had Total touchdowns of 8, 12th at running back, and had 40 red zone touches, 3.0 per game, 7th at running back. So Joseph Mixon had some very solid stats in 2019, but I really think we see that uptick in 2020. Looking at some more interesting stats here is actually the splits between the beginning of the season and the end of the season. So the last the in-split stats on the left side of the screen are from the final week 8 to week 17. The first, obviously the first 7 games of the season, which are the out-of-split numbers. So in split, the final 9 games of the season, he finished with 17.01 half PPR points per game and 18.12 PPR points per game, which is a pretty much 10 point jump from half PPR and full PPR points per game. Now, why was this jump so evident? It was actually due to the fact that he was getting many more attempts deeper down the stretch of the season. His rushing attempts the last couple weeks of the season, the last final nine weeks, were 21.56 per game versus 12 earlier in the season. So obviously that elevates all of his rushing totals. He went from zero rushing touchdowns the first seven games to .56 per game. He went from 36.43 rushing yards per game to 98 Point eleven. His receiving numbers were actually went went down in the final part of the season, but obviously just the fact that his rushing went up so much, his numbers really got elevated. I think this back st- half of the season stretch we saw from Joe Mixon is a lot more like what we're going to see the whole season in 2020. So now into the second round 
of the fantasy football drafts right now. So going down here, 13 through 24, at number 13, we got Joshua Jacobs. 14, we got Julio Jones. 15 is Aaron Jones. 16 is Lamar Jackson. 17 is Chris Godwin. 18 is Travis Kelsey. 19, we have Patrick Mahomes. 20 is Miles Sanders. 21 is George Kittle. 22 is Kenya Drake. 23 is Kenny Galladay. And number 24 is Austin Eckler. So my pick for the best value is you guys all know it's Austin fucking Eckler. I love Austin Eckler so much the man could have my children. He does look like Mr. Clean with that bald ass head, but it doesn't fucking matter. This guy is going to go absolutely beast mode in 2020. I made a whole video about Austin Eckler, strictly his player profile. You can go ahead and check that out, but I'm going to go over a lot of stuff from that video that I found very important to why I think that Austin Eckler is going to have some big, big, big success in 2020 and why I wouldn't even be mad picking him at the beginning of the second round or even at the back half of the first round because I love the guy so much. So he's obviously an LA Charger. They got those new uniforms, so he's going to look even faster. Five foot nine, 199 pounds, 25.2 years old, obviously undrafted out of Western State. He ran a 4.48 83rd percentile 40-yard dash, 59th percentile speed score, 95th percentile burst score, 86th percentile agility score. He doesn't have a bench press, but it's probably 100th percentile because this guy is absolutely yoked. Austin Eckler coming off the board as running back number 13, pick number 24, which to me makes no fucking sense because last season he finished as not the not the fifth, but the fourth best running back in fantasy football in 16 games. 19.3 PPR points per game, ranking sixth at the running back position, 132 carries, 34th at running back, 557 rush yards, 33rd at running back, but where he got his cake, where he started eating like his name was Ezekiel Elliott, which is in the receiving game, 108 targets, 6.8 per game, second. You want to know who was in front of Austin Eckler? Christian fucking McCaffrey, 92 receptions, 5.8 per game, second at running back, 993 receiving yards, 62.1 per game, second at running back. All those numbers are behind Mr. Run CMC, 993 receiving yards, 62 2.1 per game second at running back red zone touches 27 1.7 per game 27th at running back and total touchdowns 11 8th at running back so I honestly I know I brought up Christian McCaffrey before that but that's because I think Austin Eckler is like the light version of Christian McCaffrey Christian McCaffrey is the Budweiser Austin Eckler is the Bud Light and I think Austin Eckler has the potential to be a top five guy just like Christian McCaffrey but Christian McCaffrey is obviously going to be the number one guy because that guy's just a beast on the ground and in the air but so is Austin Eckler Austin Eckler is really going to get an elevated game this season after the exit of Mr. Melvin Gordon. So if you look at his stats last season, the in-split is the 12 games when Melvin Gordon was actually playing, not chilling out in Cabo, and the out-of-split is when Melvin Gordon was not playing the game. So out-of-split with without Melvin Gordon being there, he averaged 27.25 PPR points per game versus 17 with Melvin Gordon, a 10-plus point jump per game. Interestingly to note, he actually averaged the same amount of really pretty much a close amount of targets and receptions, but obviously the receiving touchdowns went up heavily when Melvin Gordon was gone. So with Melvin Gordon not there, he was averaging six receptions per game versus 5.67 with Melvin Gordon. He was averaging 0.75 touchdowns per game versus 0.42 with Melvin Gordon there and 6.9 targets without or with Melvin Gordon there versus 6.25 without Melvin Gordon. But where he really saw an immense uptick was in the rushing attack. 14 rushing attempts without Melvin Gordon versus 6.33 with Melvin Gordon in the game. This obviously meant that his rushing yards went up from 28.08 with Melvin Gordon to 55 with out Melvin Gordon and a touchdown. He scored zero fucking touchdowns in 12 games in the rushing game with Melvin Gordon there. In the four games without, he scored 0.75 per game. This guy was a beast without Melvin Gordon, and don't you dare in the comments say, Austin Eckler needs Melvin Gordon, Nick. He does not fucking need Melvin Gordon at all. All. He is going to go absolutely sicko mode in 2020. This guy's going to ball out. He's going to carry your team, and he is by far the best value pick in the second round of your 2020 fantasy football draft. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It's free, and I'm going to be producing a whole shit ton of content to help you guys win your 2020 fantasy football championship. So the third round starts off with Mike Evans at pick 25. 26, we see Amari Cooper. 27, Allen Robinson. 28, Adam Thielen. 29, 
Leonard Fournette, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, number 30. 31 is Chris Carson. 32 is Odell Beckham Jr. 33 is Melvin Gordon. 34 is Cooper Cup. 35 is Mark Andrews. And 36 is A.J. Brown. So pre- big, big, big shout out to Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He's a running back that is obviously a rookie coming out of college at LSU, gets drafted in the first round to the Kansas City Chiefs. He was not my pick here, but I do believe his ADP is going to start climbing up very, very high into like the second round just because of how much upside this guy has. He would be my pick, but I've talked about him a decent amount, and I'd actually like to talk about a different player, and that is wide receiver Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears. 36.91 FFPC ADP, a Chicago Bear, like I said, 6'2", 220 pounds, 20 20- 6.9 years old. He ran a 4.56 40-yard dash 44th at or 44th percentile, 103.2 speed score, 78th percentile, 87th percentile burst score, 75th percentile agility score, and a 91st catch radius, as well as his workout metric of a 100th percentile bust quarterback throwing him the ball pretty much his whole fucking career. Not really because Blake Bortles is one of the best quarterbacks of all time, but Mitch Trubisky has been throwing them the ball the last couple of years, and that guy is an absolute travesty. So Allen Robinson, wide receiver of the Chicago Bears right now, coming off the board as the 10th best wide receiver, 27th pick overall. Wide receiver number 8 in 2019 with 17.7 PPR points per game, 5th at wide receiver, and he played in all 16 games. He had 153 targets, 9.6 per game. You switch that around, do a bit of a reversal, you get 6.9, and that is very very nice. Number fourth at wide receiver, 98 receptions, 6.1 per game. Sixth at wide receiver, over 1,000 receiving yards, 1.147 receiving yards, 71.7 per game. Number 11 at wide receiver, seven total tutties, 13th amongst wide receiver, and 11 red zone receptions, ninth amongst wide receivers. So this guy was clearly a beast last season, and he did it with Mitchell Trubisky. Now you might be thinking, Nick, how the fuck is Mitch Trubisky that much better than 9-inch Nick Foles? Kissing Titties Trubisky is an okay quarterback. He got drafted ahead of Pat Mahomes. Doesn't that mean he's good? <laughs> that was a funny joke there. Shout out to all you uh, Chicago Bears fans who probably want to blow your brains out after hearing that statement. So Trubisky's numbers last year, atrocious. In fantasy football, he was the 25th best quarterback. He played in 15 games, 516 passing attempts, 34.4 per game, 12th out quarterback. So he was getting a lot of passing attempts. Didn't turn that at all really into any good numbers. 3,138 passing yards, 21st at wide receiver, 17 passing touchdowns at a 3.3% rate, a 5.0% touchdown rate. It's pretty normal. This guy was absolutely in the gutter. 3.3%, 27th at quarterback, 10 INTs, 28 interceptable passes, 7th at quarterback. This guy was pretty much going to look like Jameis Winston, except for not throwing 30 touchdowns. He could have thrown 28 INTs, 48. This is where he is good, though. He is able to rush the ball, 48 carries, 12th at running back, or not at running back, at quarterback, 193 rushing yards, 14th at quarterback, 2 rushing touchdowns, 13th at quarterback, and 6 red zone carries, 20th at quarterback. But now they bring in 9-inch Nick Foles. Big Dick Nick is going to be the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears. I don't see any fucking way unless the guy hurts himself walking into the stadium that Trubisky is the starting quarterback there's just no fucking way Allen Robinson is going to look much better with Mitch Trubisky and he's done it his whole season with garbage quarterbacks you would think he'd make an even bigger step this season with Mr. Big Dick Nick as his starting quarterback now into the fourth round of the fantasy football drafts to start off here at 37 we have DJ Moore of the Carolina Panthers 38, we got Zach Ertz. 39 is Le'Veon Bell. 40 is Juju Smith-Schuster. 41 is Todd Gurley. 42, Cortland Sutton. 43, James Conner. 44, Calvin Ridley. 45, Marky Mark Ingram. 46, uh, Keenan Allen. 47, Devin Singletary. 48, Dakota. No contract. Prescott, a uh, huge shout out actually to the guy that I'm not going to be talking about here, DJ Moore, one of my favorite wide receivers in fantasy football, being criminally, 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 we underrated. I don't know. I just sound like a dumbass right there. If you guys want to check out some more stats on DJ Moore, I actually made a video before on DJ Moore versus another player, and I think you can get a lot of stats talking about DJ Moore from there. So, with the first guy I want to talk about here in the fourth round that I think is a tremendous value is Le'Veon Bell, running back of the New York Football Jets, six foot one, two hundred and thirty pounds, out of Michigan State, twenty eight point four years old. Today, he tweeted that he has not played his best football yet. So let's see. Maybe this is his season. Four point six forty yard dash forty. 7th percentile, 60 or 72nd percentile speed score, 21st percentile burst score, 92nd percentile agility score, and an 80th percentile bench press. So right now he's coming off the board as running back number 18 and pick number 39, which makes no sense to me because he finished as the running back number 16 last season in the worst scenario, playing in 15 games for the Jets. 14.2 PPR points per game, 18th 
at running back. He had 246 carries, 16.4 per game, 11th at running back, 789 rush yards, 52.6 per game, 23rd at running back, 78 targets, 7th at running back, 66 receptions, 7th at running back, 461 receiving yards, 30.7 per game, 9th at running back, red zone touches are 27, 1.8 per game, 27th at running back, and total touchdowns are 4, 42nd at running back. Now, it is very hard to predict touchdown totals in the NFL because it's kind of random. Old man Frank Gore might just mosey on in there with his walker and steal all of his touchdowns, but over four touchdowns should be a fucking lock for this season, probably around eight touchdowns or maybe even more if the Jets actually get it rolling. The Jets last year were put in a fucking terrible situation after Mono Man Sam decided to get Mono after hooking up with some woman. So Le'Veon Bell obviously was kind of set to fail there. He's set to fail there because Adam Gaze is his fucking head coach. But I think we see a better season out of him. A lot of people are going to be very off on Le'Veon Bell due to the fact that he was a first round pick last year. Some people were taking him inside of the top five and what he did to you is he did you nasty. He did you dirty but like I said in another video, I'm always down to do something dirty and pick him back up again in 2020. If we look at the Jets offensive line, it has improved from last season. It finishes the 28th ranked offensive line last year in 2019. They had three plus new starters in 2020. Now they're ranked 27th in pro football focuses O lineman rankings. They draft Makai Becton this season in the first round who is an excellent run blocker to obviously help Mr. Le'Veon Bell. Might not help out Mono Man Sam from getting leveled, but that shouldn't really matter. They bring in center Connor McGovern. They signed free agent George Fant for a new right tackle but he will end up battling with Chuma Adoga to be that starting right tackle. So I think the Jets' offensive line improving and the team overall improving with the draft should mean that they should be better this season. I mean, the Jets are an absolute travesty of an organization, but Le'Veon Bell could really do anything behind this offensive line. The guy just has the immense talent. I don't understand why he's being drafted at his floor when his ceiling is really a top 12 running back. So the next guy to talk about from this round, I gave you guys two guys here. Hit you with the one-two punch, the one-two Mayweather. Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons, six foot one, 189 pounds, 25.6 years old. 40-yard dash is a 4.43, 86 percentile, 64th percentile speed score, second percentile burst score, 42nd percentile agility score, and a 24th percentile catch radius. So Calvin Ridley right now coming off the board as wide receiver number 18, pick 44, but he's inside of my top 15 at the wide receiver rankings. Wide receiver number 27 in 2019 in 13 games. If you guys want to check out my rankings, those are also down below. You can check out the Patreon. 15 PPR points per game, 18th at wide receiver. He had 93 targets, 7.2 per game, 34th at wide receiver, 63 total receptions, 4.8 per game, 30th at wide receiver, 866 receiving yards, 6666666. Before we came to the city, they threw us a parade. That's something like what Drake said. I probably fucked up the lyrics because I'm a dumbass. 66.6 per game, 30th at wide receiver, 5 red zone receptions, 42nd at wide receiver, 7 total touchdowns, 13th at wide receiver. Shout out to Dan Marino, 17.7% target share in that Atlanta Falcons offense, but I expect that shit to be on the up and up. Now, why do I like Calvin Ridley in 2020? For one reason, last year they were the most pass-heavy offense in the NFL, and I would not be surprised if they were this pass-heavy again. I've talked about this before, the Matty Ice theory, the theory of Matty Icery. This motherfucker is good, and then he's great. He's good, then he's great. Last year he was good. This year he is going to make the quarterback position great again because the guy's going to be a god, and so is Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley splits in 2019 that I thought would be pretty notable is with Mohamed Sanu versus without. In split on the left side of your screen is with Mohamed Sanu versus the one on the right, which is without Mohamed Sanu. So seven games with Sanu, six without. In the six games without Sanu, we averaged 14.95 half PPR points per game versus 10.83 without Sanu, 17.78 PPR points per game versus 12.9 without why was this obviously it was an increased workload getting 8.17 targets per game versus 6.29 he had 82.17 receiving yards per game versus 53.29 but his receiving touchdowns actually went down without Sanu but I don't really care too much about his touchdown total because I think it should be around 7, 8, 9, or 10 in 2020. What's different about this Atlanta Falcons team? Oh boy, let's figure it out. The fucking running back for the team, they got one injury-prone scrub, Devontae Freeman, they threw him to the curb, and they said, let me bring in another injury-prone running back in Mr. Todd Gurley. They take their tight end, they yeet his ass to Cleveland, and they bring in another guy that plays just like him in Hayden Hurst. This offense is going to be firing at all cylinders. Shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they're going to be firing the cannons. They're in an offense 
if-driven team. Their defense is absolutely atrocious. They play in a division where they're going to have to be scoring a whole shit ton to win those games against the Bucks and the Saints. They could probably fall asleep and beat the Carolina Panthers. So next round to talk about here is the fifth round of the fantasy football draft. Pick starting at 49 is David Johnson. Uh, number 50 is Tyler Lockett. 51 is Jonathan Taylor. 52 is T.Y. Hilton. 53 is Darren Waller. 54 is Decaf Metcalf. 55 is DJ Chark. 56 is Stefan Diggs. 57 is 5 foot 5 Kyler Murray. 58 is Robert Woods. 59 is Devontae Paca. And number 60 is big man Russell Wilson who threw a pick to choke against the New England Patriots because for some reason they decided not to run the ball. My pick for this round is Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin. But spoiler alert, he's not the only player I'm going to be talking about from this round. Jonathan Taylor, Indianapolis Colt, 5'10", second-round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, 226 pounds, 21.5 years old. This guy is fast as fuck, boy. 4.3, 940-yard dash, 98th percentile, 99th percentile speed score, 71st percentile burst score, 66th percentile Jody score, and a 27th percentile bench press in college at Wisconsin in 2019. He put up some amazing stats coming off the board as running back number 21 in fantasy drafts, pick number 52. So he played in 14 games at Wisconsin, 320 rushing attempts, 2,003 rushing yards, 6.3 yards per carry. You try to get over 5.0 yards per carry is pretty good. Six plus is very good. 26 receptions on 36 targets. He's got those glue hands, 252 receiving yards, 26 total touches, and a 10.30% target share in that Wisconsin offense. He slips into an offense now that is going to be predicated on the rushing game. They have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. I really believe they are going to want to run the rock a whole bunch. And spoiler alert, Phillip Rivers loves to dump the ball off to the running back. Now, I understand that Marlon Mack is going to be there, so it may take a couple of weeks for Jonathan Taylor to emerge and be the head honcho workhorse back that you want, but it may only take three to four weeks, and if it's a fucking 16-game season, so you put him on the bench, he's your fifth-round pick, you wait a couple weeks, and then boom, he flies in there and starts winning you some games. So looking at some interesting stats right here is actually the running back hit rates by draft position. This is looking from 2010 in PPR all the way to 2009. Now, Jonathan Taylor is a second-round pick, so his hit rate actually is not as good as you would want. A top-12 finish, only seven players have ever done that before. 22% chance that it is a top-24 finish. Actually, not seven players have ever done that. That was a fucking lie. It's a 7% chance, or based on the 7% hit rate, that he could be a top-12 finish, 22% chance. He could be a top-24 finish, 33%, top-36, top-48 finish, 48. But this running back class was as deep as as my asshole could get after Todd Gurley just bends you over because you drafted him for some reason. So, in reality, he's probably a first-round pick, so there'd be a 44% chance there for top 12, 56% chance for top 24, 69 chance, very nice for top 36, and an 81% chance for top 48. I think this is important to note because even if you try to put a lot of books, or not a lot of books, a lot of fucking worth into this basket, you're really buying in on JT. You just should know this just in case you feel like you got burnt by him at least you know the stats here but I really do think it may just take a couple of weeks for him to be the workhorse back in Indianapolis a very good run blocking offensive line and the final player of the fifth round we're going to be talking about here is Robert Woods of the Los Angeles Rams, 51.79 FFPC ADP, 6 feet tall, 201 pounds, out of USC, 28.3 years old. This guy's a journeyman. He's been on a zillion fucking teams. Not really, probably only like three teams, but he's found his home and his stride in the LA Rams uniform. 40-yard dash is a 63rd percentile for it with a 4.51, 56th percentile speed score, 22nd percentile burst score, 12th percentile agility score, and a 13th percentile catch radius, but none of that shit fucking matters because this guy is is a goddamn beast. Last season, finishing as the wide receiver number 14, now coming off the board as wide receiver number 25, pick 58. He did that wide receiver number 14 in 15 total games. He had 15.5 PPR points per game, ranking 12th at the wide receiver position. He had 140 total targets, 9.3 per game, 8 that wide receiver, 9 receptions, 6.0 per game, 8 that wide receiver, 1,394 receiving yards, 75.6 per game, 14th at wide receiver, 7 red zone receptions, 42nd at wide receiver, 3 total touchdowns, 59th at wide receiver, and a 23.4% target share in that LA offset offense, 55th at wide receiver. Now, I know I've talked about this before, but once the LA Rams committed to the two tight end set, we kind of really saw the emergence of Robert Woods after their bye week nine when they committed to that two tight end set. Now, I actually talked about how this will help Cooper Cup as well, and I believe that it will. 
Cooper Cup kind of struggled towards the back of the year because of it, but I think he will obviously learn to become better in that type of system. So seven total games in split after they used the two tight end set and eight out of split before they were doing that. He was just really not that good. 9.9 half PR, PPR points per game versus 15.53 once they committed after the bye. 19.24 after the bye in PPR points per game versus 12.28. And why was this? This was due to an immense amount of targets coming his way. 11.43 after the bye versus 7.5 before the bye. 7.43 reception versus 4.75. His touchdown didn't happen at all in the first eight weeks of the season, scoring zero, and then he had 0.29 per game in or right after the bye. And then his receiving yards numbers obviously went up 94.71 after the bye versus 58.88 before the bye. So I think we see a Robert Woods alike the back of the season versus the front of the season because Sean McVay is going to figure this shit out. He's going to get the offense buzzing. And he also got rid of Brandon Cook. So there's no more Brandon Cook. So now it's just Woods and Cup. And I think both of those guys are going to be eating some W's for your fantasy team, just like Jameis Winston does in the New Orleans Saints stadium, as well as in now in a New Orleans Saints uniform. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If any of you ended up enjoying, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It's free, and I produce content every single fucking day to help you guys win your 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. I love each and every single one of you motherfuckers. Check out the draft guide down below, and I'll see you tomorrow with yet another heater of a video. Good boy!